but the dog is what everybody freaked out about. Back when I did film cars in New York City for creative film cars, we'd work for different organizations, film, television, editorial. But some of the TV shoots were a lot of fun. And the ones that I kind of enjoyed because I got to be an observer were for ABC News, the What Would You Do show. They would set up some kind of social experiment where they set up a, something's happening and they would film normal people walking through their daily lives to see what they would do. And occasionally they would do them outside with, with cars and they would call us for the cars. So one of the episodes we did, it was a setup with a car accident. And myself and my friend Linda Jones, who's a great actress, uh, played the two people in the episode. And we set up and built a Jaguar XJ6 because we were trying to think of a car we could get relatively cheaply but looked expensive that would be believable if it just fell apart. So Jaguar, perfect. And back then they still had mechanical bumpers before all the wrap stuff. So we had that and we rented a Ford Mustang convertible. So the conceit was that the Jaguar is parked in a spot and it's affluent neighborhood. There's a cafe nearby and things like that. And one of us drives in with the Mustang, backs into the Jaguar. The requirement was you had to be able to reset the entire front end of the car in under 45 seconds. So I had to rebuild the front of the car so we could reassemble the whole front end, the grill, the bumper, everything fell off and we could just slide it back into place. So it was one of my favorite builds because it looked great and it set up great. So you all you do is back in a little bit and the whole thing just went, Psh! it was completely unbelievable. We didn't hit it that hard. And then we'd just walk away and we'd see people, whether they would stop us or not, like not write a note or not doing anything. And we'd make excuses like, oh, I had a job interview and I, re I really got to go. And like, you got to do this. So all of these shows were based on like what the public is going to react to. Now they couldn't shoot in New York because you have to get a signed release from everybody in the background. So we always shot in Jersey or Connecticut. That was fun. Another one we did in Jersey was Old Man. We got a Cadillac North Star. Because you can get, again, we need a kind of grandpa car that we can get cheap and we could beat up. North Star. Nobody wants him. It was going to blow up in a day anyway. So we bought it off a used car lot in Jersey and brought it to the shoot. And then we got a, I think it was a Nighthawk motorcycle. And the idea was the motorcycle was parked, old man backs in and just knocks it over and runs it over. And we had to build it so that he could run over this motorcycle repeatedly. So we got bars for it and we had all kinds of things rigged up to it that wouldn't break in half. And a great old actor and he just would come in, and he's all like, doo, 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 and he backs in and crushes the motorcycle. And people are like, oh. and then he just acts lost. Like, oh. And people come over, you, you okay? He's like, I don't know how to get home. Like, he'd make up something new every time somebody said something. He was fantastic. He's like, have you seen my children? And then they brought a little boy, and they're like, I'm going to take my grandson home. And they're like, you don't, you can't drive. And each of these shoots was a full day or two days of shooting. So we got to see all kinds of crazy reactions. One of my favorite reactions was another Jersey one, like a 95 degree day. It was actually my Volvo station wagon. We brought it to this kind of town square area, lots of foot traffic, and we parked it. And they put a baby in it with the windows rolled up and a dog. So the baby was fake and it looked real. It was terrifying. It was one of these real baby doll things and it, it breathed and the eyes would move. They took it out of a plastic bag. Your immediate reaction was like, what is wrong with that baby? It was that real. They put that in the back seat of the car and they actually put a speaker in the front seat so you could hear the uh, from outside the car. And people would walk by and see if they would do anything. I actually bought an extra rear window for my car because I was expecting somebody to smash it. Nobody smashed it. In fact, most of the people just walked right by. The dog, on the other hand, was real. And it was 100 something degrees in the car. We put a, a thermometer on the floor of the car that a camera was on, so you could actually see how hot it was in there. And it's 100 and something degrees. We put a home air conditioning system in the back of the station wagon with covered to look like a present. And we ran wires at the bottom of it, and we ran a home AC inside of it to keep it cool enough because the dog had to be in there, but the dog also had to have its trainer 
had to be in there. And this poor guy had to lay down in the footwell of the back of a Volvo 850 station wagon covered in a blanket and it's 120 degrees in the car and the car and the dog is panting and sitting on the seat. We start that shot and immediately somebody's like, there's a dog in a car. And this fire truck just randomly came through and was pulling through. And this woman ran over the fire truck and was like, you gotta help this dog, this dog's in trouble. I, I guess the assumption was that somebody was gonna come back for the baby, like the parents are around, but the dog is what everybody freaked out about. And this was like a two day shoot. But when they put the finished product on television, the episode, I think they skewed it to be more about the baby than the dog. Like, I don't think it, the results were actually accurate. They wanted to see how people more helping the baby than the dog, but it was definitely the dog. People freaking out about the dog. And that, I don't know what they paid that trainer in there, but that guy deserved every dollar to lay in that car for, for I mean, half an hour at a time or 45 minutes at a time. And we shot all day like that. Then we did one in Connecticut and it was an Audi A4 that was my, that was Alex Richter from the 2904, that was his car. And the conceit was a person who's had a DUI has a car and it has a breather in it that you have to breathe to activate the ignition. These devices are tremendously expensive. And so we had to just build something. So I got one of the battery powered breathalyzers and tested it to see if it worked. I mean, purely from science, I had to, experiment to make sure that it was working. Then we built like a cord for it and put it into the, the steering column and it looked legit and a little hook on it and some Velcro. Then they had a male and a female actor come out of a bar and be like, excuse me, you, you gotta breathe in this because I have to go pick up my son at school and if I'm late, it'll be in trouble. And each, they had, again, a half a dozen different excuses. I gotta go to court. My favorite thing about the drunk shoot, let's call it that, shall we? With some of the reactions of the passerbys, there were people who were former alcoholics. We, we found out just walking by and they're like, I wanna help you and you need help. And um, I will drive you to your school or whatever excuse they had given or I could take you to court and we'll straighten all this out. And the amount of people were like, just beautiful. The actors occasionally would be like, listen, I'll give you 20 bucks. I'll give you 20 bucks. And there was one guy who was like, all right, $20. I'll I'll take the $20, hell yeah. What do you want blowing? Sure. And it was too easy and they were like, wow, did you just do that? Like, I'll blow in your car for you. Go drive drunk, do whatever you want, my friend. Like, here's another drink, on your, on your way. It was fascinating. I'm sure, like the, the show on television's edited for, you know, some kind of narrative, but watching it live and you don't know what's gonna happen was interesting. And, and having been one of the actors, it is completely random. You have no idea how any individual is gonna to react to these things. And what we did with the crash in the car wasn't high stakes, but a person, a drunk getting into a car is high stakes. A baby in a car is high stakes. So for that one, as far as like who responded in a socially desirable way, 50-50? No, actually, you know what? I'm gonna push it more towards like 70-30 on the good side, that people are good. That probably 20% of them were neutral to the point that like, if you don't take action, you're part of the problem type people. And then 10% were a problem. The one that was pretty disturbing though, was we had to get a car and it ended up being an old 80s Crown Vic, I think. And we had to bring it to a park in a nice, very nice neighborhood in New Jersey and park it. And they were gonna have vandals attack the car to see who called. And they were gonna spray paint the car and hit it with tire irons and things. So we had to come up with some way of spray painting a car and then being able to clean it perfectly clean and then have the next group of kids spray paint it. First we waxed the heck out of it. And then we were looking at like, like do we, do we put alcohol on it and then spray it with really cheap spray paint? Cause it's gotta look like spray paint. And what we tested a bunch of things, we finally came up with hair color that you put in your spray your hair for like Halloween and stuff. Looks like spray paint, cans look, are pretty big and look like spray paint, and it comes off pretty easily the first few times. So what was disturbing about the shoot was they had a bunch of white kids, thug type skater kids up there and they're screwing around with it and people are like, you know, walking away. And I think one person called in, said something about it, and they were obviously messing with this car and they, 
we told them like, okay, take it up a level, like make it worse. It wasn't just them. They're trying to break in. They've got a Slim Jim in the window and people are like, oh, shit. while this was going on, and I'll never forget this. We had a set of black actors that were going to do the same thing. And they or their friends or something was, was, they were sleeping in a car at the other end of the parking lot waiting for their turn. There were two or three 911 calls about them sleeping in their car as potential thugs or something than the actual kids screwing around with the car. And we had, in all of these, we are in touch with the local police and they know what's going on. So when they call, somebody calls 911, they clarify the location of what's going on. They're like, oh, we have somebody being taken care of. We, we were shocked when that happened. The police were like, do you know about what's, what's going on? We're like, oh yes, but it has nothing to do with our setup. And when we did use the black kids as the villains, it was, I guess, expectedly horrible. And they hadn't even let, set a foot on it or hit it yet. But people, cell phones were popping up and calling. And this one woman came up and she was, this was before there were Karens. She was like Karen 2006 or whatever it was. She came right up and she's like, mm, you can't do this and I'm gonna call the police. And, and this is before they really got going. So we had, like the, the shot really wasn't started. Like there wasn't any real spray paint. She was just being horrible with her little dog. And you're like, oh, please just stop being so stereotypical and predictable. I could sit in a studio all day long and watch models sit there. That's great. But to have something where you're actually, you know, enlightened by the situation, well, I love those shoots. They were terrific. And they're still going on today uh, on ABC News, from what I know. And we don't supply the cars anymore. But when we did, it was a lot of fun. Homeowner's insurance may just seem like some boring thing that you have to have to get a mortgage, but it can be a surprising way to actually save a lot of money. Policy Genius is your advocate to do that. They shop your policy and your insurance needs amongst all the major carriers and find you the best deal. In fact, every time it renews, Policy Genius does it all over again. They check everybody else, they make sure you're getting the best deal, and if there's a better deal out there, they switch you for free. Policy Genius can also bundle your homeowner's policy with your car insurance policy and save you even more. Policy Genius has saved their combined auto and home insurance customers an average of $1,127 a year. So visit the link in the description below, tell them a little bit about yourself and your property, and they'll tell you if you're getting the best deal. Be sure to thank them for their support of Benwiki.